Today I have a special treat for me and you, but mostly me. It is an art supply haul. I will post the list of things I got below in the description box and if available I will get you a link so you can check out what I got. I just checked whether the order was complete. Everything is in there. The big theme for this order is definitely oil pastels. Recently I reviewed the Art Medium oil pastels with the old Sakura Crepa from my mom. They were from the 80s and I had loads of fun, it was great. And I decided I wanted to get a fresh pack where I could use all the colors and also researched which brand would be a good fit for me. I will swatch everything I show you except for the oil pastels. I will do a separate video where I also talk about why I chose this brand. Let's get into it. I have my two sketchbooks with me, one for dry mediums and one for watercolor. Now let's start with the watercolors. Three of these are Schminke Horadam. We have Perilin Green, Perilin Violet as well as Prussian Green. And this is the first Daniel Smith watercolor I own. This is the color I've been eyeing for a while. Let's see how they behave with water in my sketchbook. And I'm not a fan of the traditional swatches that are rectangular. I like to do some different shapes, mostly pebbles. The sketchbook I have is from a German brand situated in Kassel. It's called Kunst und Papier, so that means art and paper. And it has 35% cotton in the paper. The brush I'm using is Windsor Newton Professional Watercolor Sable with a pointed round brush tip. It's gonna look very good with the uh, title page illustration I'm still planning for the Iliad. I don't know how it is going to look exactly, but I know I am going to use the Perilene colors because they give such a historic vibe. And this is truly where you can see the difference between the Schminke Academy and Schminke Horadam. The way it moves about the paper because the pigment is of such uh, high quality and very fine. And now we have a premiere. I've never used watercolor from the tube. I'll just get a little porcelain palette and try to mix it there. Yep, that looks like me putting them away dirty. Ooh. This is such a beautiful color. This is just how I imagined it. You can re really see that there is yellow, blue and green in the paint just from this residue. And I chose this because it does have a granulating look and mixes all my favorite colors, blue and green as well as blue-green and greenish-blue. I do not believe there is much more space in my palette. Um, okay, this doesn't fit in there. Let's continue with the pens. Let's start with two of the newest Uni has brought to the market. It is the Uni Fineliner Amot. I am a big fan of Uni. They have the Uni Posca markers, which are acrylic markers. My favorite fine liner brand is from Uni, Uni Pin. It's water and fade proof. And now they brought out these fine liners. Let's test out what they can do. Now what I feel is quite special about them is that you can vary the angle you are writing and drawing with with no problem at all. Sometimes fine liners give out. The ink distribution is smooth and I can definitely see myself sketching with these. This one you might notice, I already said in another video this was my favorite pen, but then I lost it. Uh, I had it twice, once in green and one in uh, black, and I lost the black one, so I got it again. It has a very fine tip, just like all the Pilot pens, so this is the 
the Pilot V5 and I do love about it that it has a cartridge system. There are four different colors, red, blue, black and green. Love it. Then I needed a new CD marker or a permanent marker. It simply has a flexible tip. Doesn't like the sketchbook I am painting in. There is a bit of bleeding. I'm never going to use it for drawing, so that is fine. This is for writing as well. It's the Uniball Air. It has a fascinating tip. There should be no bleeding at all because it is such a light ink. It doesn't even press into the paper. But again, not for drawing. Actually, not for drawing at all. This is the Uni Sign Pen. This one I am using for drawing. It shouldn't bleed. Yes, it does not bleed, even though it has a felt, felt tip and you can also vary the size of your line. However, it is hard to fill in larger shapes. The Micron Pigma are known for their fine liners. This one is an everyday writing pen with archival ink. I'll use it for to do writing in my calendar. You should be able to do some doodles without having much trouble. But there is definitely a difference the way it rolls over the paper. There are spaces where it gives out. It is, as Sakura says, an everyday pen. There is no bleeding at all. Sakura, Pilot and Uni are just such great brands. Now this is the juicy part. These two I got for drawing. It even has a steel tip. This one is the Pilot GTEC C4. Even though this is quite rough a sketching paper, it does not uh, give out at this moment. Yes, this is just lovely. Now this is the Pilot GTEC C Mica. Some of these were even available in different sizes. You will definitely find what you're looking for with the Pilot pens. This is the brown one. There are lots of different colors of this one. Let's do an Amphora. It also doesn't give out at all. That's where the steel tip really comes in handy. While making all these tiny little strokes, it doesn't scratch, it doesn't collect any little paper scraps that could mess with a flow of ink. Now the last three I decided to get were the Uni Pin Fine Liners. These are my favorite fine liners. They are very smooth in their ink distribution. They never give out, which is very important to me because I am an impatient painter. And these three colors are available in 0.1 as well as 0.5, but 0.5 is not versatile enough for me. So I got the light gray, sapia, as well as dark gray. You can see where I am going with this collection of pens, I guess. I want to draw more and I am inclined to do so when I have a variety of fine liners and pens that aren't just pencil. Because I, I drew so much pencil in here, but I just get bored at some point. I hope this summary is somewhat helpful to you. If you have any questions about the art supplies, you can leave me a comment and I'll be happy to answer it. The next video is definitely going to be more colorful. As I mentioned, I'm going to show you everything oil pastel and I will introduce everything you might need in order to get started. I'll also talk about how I decided which brand to go with and the differences I experienced with them. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.